G'day guys, Elfie here. Um, I was chatting to someone, or I got a message from someone on YouTube. Uh, I think they are 12 or 13 years old, in America somewhere, and they wanted to share with me an idea for teaching probability in Minecraft. They rigged up a, a map to show me, um, after I requested they send me a map, and this is it here. Now I've made some modifications to the map, which I'll talk about later, but this person, SSWE903, I'm pretty sure, on YouTube. So everyone spawns onto the blue wool because he knows what sort of teacher tools we have. The wood pressure plate over here will allow students into the observatory area and then there's a plate under the green which will allow uh, the probability experiment to get happening. Um, so he's created all of this stuff here. So release the kids using that and they get into this observatory area here and then so inside here you set up a probability experiment so what he's suggested if I turn on animals is that we use sheep, pigs and cow so sheep, pigs and cow and you put a certain number of each in so let's say we have five cows two pigs and one sheep so aside from multiplayer glitches and noise being too loud hang on I'll turn that down um, students can stand in here and see what's happening so there are a total of eight creatures in there maybe one has escaped um, and then the teacher would stand on this green wool pressure plate here and in theory one of those animals will drop down it won't always happen that way um, but the chances that it's a cow we would have this discussion with the kids is five out of eight a pig is a two chance so a 25 percent chance of happening and a sheep is a one or twelve a one out of eight or 12.5 percent chance of happening um, the disadvantage of this setup is there is a chance none will drop because none have dropped yet Right, and then there's this area down here where students can see the results if needed. Um, so the one downside is an animal won't drop each and every time. My thought is you could stand here until they do. There goes one. There goes two. So it looks like we got a pig and a cow. So we could talk about the probability there. And given the sound that I heard, it was the pig that dropped first. So what's the probability of getting a pig, cow and sheep now? So you could have that discussion. Um, using that to teach the theory of probability. Now the other thing I set up was a bit of an activity the students could do afterwards. These dispensers would be hidden away somewhere um, and I haven't tested this myself because I wanted to do it on camera. So there's an unknown one here um, but the others the other four dispensers here are known probabilities so in this one there's a, 60, a stack of 64 cows, 32 pigs and 16 sheep. 64 sheep, 32 cows, 16 pig, 64 pig, 32 sheep, 16 cow, 16 of each, and then they need to work out what they think the probability in this one is. So this would be an activity, an experiment the students could do to start playing with probability. So they'd perform an experiment, cow, pig, cow, cow, pig. So we can see that, oh, poor little pig is dying. Um, this is again an in principle section here. So they go through, they test all of these, they get their results, they work out which one is which. And then they use this one here to work out what the probability of that one is. Um, in principle map, untested, um, but just a thought I had after discussing, I'll turn animals off, discussing things with, with that person on YouTube the other experiment I've set up here after discussion, again, I was chatting on Skype to this, this guy last night, um, and we were talking about what I was cover or what was subjects were coming up in, in my science course um, soon, and um, something we're doing is forces. So what I thought is we could actually measure Minecraft gravity. Um, I've had a bit of a play with this, I haven't actually done it, uh, so I'm going to use the video I take now to actually do some calculations and work out Minecraft's gravity, how it acts on sand and or gravel. And then I want to talk to you about a misconception that I had 
that I think is probably worth uh, discussing with the students and using Minecraft as the basis for that discussion. So if I place the sand here, it's going to drop straight down 100 blocks and we get a visual and an auditory cue down there. So the students will be able to do this in groups. Um, I would have this set up strewn around for them to play with. The other thing I'm thinking is get them to design an experiment to do it. Um, it may be uh, a little bit harder than I would like it to be for the students to design an experiment, but I won't know until I try it. Um, but basically you place that block there, you measure how long it takes for that block to fall the 100 blocks mm. down and set off that. So that's using 100 and I have varying heights set up here. So we have a height of 10 here that we could use to measure it. Um, again, I haven't set up the music and the lights on all of them. It's just, again, an in-principle one. So that one's 20. 30 blocks. 40 blocks. Uh, 50 blocks. And this one is 75 blocks. Get it up there. So again, I'm just doing it very roughly, but that time taken for them to drop and knowing the distance that they're dropping should help me work out how gravity um, affects sand in Minecraft and gravel. The other experiment I'm thinking they could do, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this one already because I did it myself, is do sand and gravel fall at the same speed? Um, which they do, I am pretty sure. So they should stay the same distance apart. Hmm, might have to do that again. I'm not sure they do. So let's do it on the 100 one, and I'm going to count this time. So this is the sort of stuff I would be getting my students to do. Um, I'll place gravel first. Three, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. yeah, see they do fall at roughly the same speed. I could check that with the video, but it is roughly the same speed. Um, however, the one misconception that I had, and I'm a science teacher, I'm an educated man, um, was that I thought that weight affected how fast you fell. Um, and that's not true at all. I was speaking to the, the resident physics teacher here. So if I stand on top of this sand block, and break the brick, the, the, brick, the brick block underneath it, um, I'll show you what happens. You can see I fall much, much faster than that sand block does. Now, in real life, that doesn't happen. So what I'm thinking is, have that discussion with the students because they would think that, that was true. Well, the reason I fell quicker was because I weighed more in the game. Um, however, in real life, it doesn't matter how much you weigh, you still only fall at, a, at the set pace of gravity. So the only explanation the students are going to be come up with as to why this is not a real life application is that, or the only reason that they could explain this away with is that this sand block has greater wind resistance than me as, as the character in Minecraft. What I might do is do that see if I can do this. So obviously the only way we can explain that away is that that sand block has greater wind resistance than me which is why it falls slower. Um, so that's some updates on a probability map and uh, the theory behind it, an idea for a experiment um, or um, yeah probably an experiment is probably the best word for it using the theory about probability to try and work out an unknown and then my gravity map which hopefully I'm thinking about doing in the next couple of weeks so hopefully you'll be able to see some footage of that coming soon thanks everyone for watching I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys next time